Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, um, today's video is one of my favorite kinds of videos to record, and that is, um, uh, enough based on the title, my top 10 least favorite movies of all time. This is an updated version. Um, I think I've made two other versions of this. Um, the ones that you watch are quite outdated. Which is why I'm making this list today. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into it. At number 10, we have Troll. Um, this is by far the absolute worst DreamWorks movie. The concept is absolutely ludicrous. The characters are incredibly stupid and extremely annoying. Every single one of them. The voice acting is very miscast, I feel like. Why is Justin Timberlake in this movie? And the songs, oh god, the songs. The songs are so incredulously bad. Um, to the point where they make me want to pull my eyes and brains out every time I hear one. Um, dear lord, they are very bad. Um, so the plot of this movie goes as follows. The, the trolls are like this. They're trying, they have their own little kingdom thing, and they're trying to avoid being, like, completely taken over and eaten by the giants, I think. This movie is incredibly forgettable, and the plot is very, very dumb. In summary, this movie is very bad, but not as bad as, as the other ones on this list. And number nine is Frozen. Now we come to the worst Disney animated movie. Um, my problem with Frozen is... Um... A lot of the characters really suck. Um, like, Elsa is extremely boring and predictable. Anna is, like, too naive to make her kind of character archetype interesting. That, that she's too dumb to be interesting. Kristoff is even possibly even dumber. Hans is a terrible twist villain. So bad to the point that, like, for the longest time I didn't even think of him as even a twist villain in the first place. That is how utterly trash he is. Um, the plot of this movie kind of goes all over the place. Um, like, the one kind of positive things are like Olaf is kind of funny but even then she sometimes gets a little old after a while um and then the sisterly relationship is kind of okay it's one of the least bad things about this movie um yeah um all the characters are really bad Plot is bad. Um, the pacing is terrible. Dear Lord. The pacing is all over the place. And the humor. God, the humor is. Fringeworthy is like an understatement for how bad the humor is in this movie. It's very unfunny. And a lot of the comic relief characters just end up looking extremely stupid. Um, however, the most egregious sin of this movie is by far the songs. They're, well, they're about the same level as Trolls, but I just like the characters more in this movie, so that's why it's worse. Um, ah, uh, there's so many dumb ones. Let It Go, Love is Dumping Door, the, the freaking Troll song. There's so many bad songs in this movie. This movie is just terrible. Um, at number eight is The Matrix Revolutions. Hold on a second. Okay, my apologies. It's actually Resurrections, not Revolutions. Revolutions is the third one. 
Um, so to kind of give a rundown about all these movies, obviously, I love the first one. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure I've gotten to that point in the updated movies list of why I love The Matrix. Um, it's a fantastic movie, number nine in my top ten. Love, love, love that movie. The second one is, is, is it, is it terrible, but it's kind of forgettable to be completely honest. And, um, the, the third one is a little bit better, mainly because I find the Agent Smith parts to be slightly more entertaining. And then we get to this crap set. To be completely honest, this film probably should never have existed. Um, because it just simply didn't need to happen. Like, how, there, there didn't even really need to be sequels, but like, I can, I can maybe understand the plot direction that they took and, and the way they summed up Agent Smith's art near the, by the end of the third movie. And, but this movie does nothing of does nothing with that. Instead, what this movie does is it takes like a much older Keanu Reeves, who just quite simply does not fit the role in as the, as like Neo anymore. Uh, and it just looks weird with him being so much older in this movie. Uh, And then there's the fact that Trinity's actor looks like she's, like, at least 50 years older than the first movie. Um, like, the character, like, I don't understand, like, <laughs> there are so many things I don't understand with this movie. Like, the fact that they make, like, a new, like, younger, hip version of the, of Morpheus. Like, basically, the plot of this movie is, like, Yana Reeves makes The Matrix as, like, a hot, a, a, a top-selling video game. And then he randomly starts, like, getting flashbacks about when, about, like, from this young hip Morpheus, who is not Lawrence Fishburne, by the way. I don't even know who the heck the actor is, but he's, like, He's, he's some forgettable, terrible no-name that just, like, does not know how to play Morpheus at all and is a absolute disgrace to the character. And, and like, honestly, the worst thing of this movie is it feels like it's trying to rehash the glory days of the first movie. Because, like, it kind of follows a similar plot structure in that, um, like, Neo is, like, in this reality, and he, and he's, and Morpheus wants him to, like, discover the truth, essentially. But the difference is, in the first movie, this was actually done well because he was strung along. And he had to make the choice for himself. But in this movie, it's almost as if, like, Morpheus is like, Hey, uh, Neo, do you remember The Matrix? Yeah, this isn't actually the real world. Um, I need you to follow me. And, and the character is like, Oh, yeah, I remember that. This isn't real life at all. I should just, like, quit my good paying job and oh yeah I had the hots for Trinity too. Oh I wonder where she's going, where she is right now. I wanna I wanna kiss her a lot. Um and then and then we get to Trinity, which is possibly the most like is one of the most nonsensical parts about this movie because Trinity, actually, th this actually could have been the potential for kind of a unique angle because because ultimately in in the original Trinity was one of the people that 
essentially pulled Neo into the Matrix in the first place and convinced him that the Matrix was not actually real life and that he was being controlled by the agents or whatever. Um, and, 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 and machines and things like that. However, like, they could have, like, in this, in this movie, like, um, Tunti's character, like, goes by a different name, has her own family and loving husband, like, and she doesn't appear to be, like, dissatisfied with her life at all. And, um, and then, just, like, um, Neo, Neo and young Hit Morpheus show up, well, mostly Neo, and and he's basically just, like, casually running in. Basically, like, essentially, Neil is a stalker in this movie. Because he's like, hey, babe, remember me? Hey, Trinity, remember me? Hey, I'm here. Hey, do you remember these? This is real life. We love each other and, and stuff. And for whatever stupid reason, Trinity, like, abandons her happy life. And again, this is where I, this is I'm saying there could have been some, there's some, some mispotential here because I feel like maybe the, um, the Wachowskis, they, they could have written it, written Trinity in a way to where, like, he kind of strolls to disconnect. But no, no, they, they just don't do that at all. She, she just, like, kind of weirdly, like, says goodbye to our family, and then just starts instantly loving Neo again, even though they had no idea who they were five minutes before that. And it's completely ridiculous. Um, and the final thing I want to touch on is, uh, the villain. The villain is astronomically Awful in this movie. Like, I, I'm, I'm gonna look it up. Okay, I just looked it up. And basically, the main villain in this movie is like this guy that's pretending to be Neo's therapist. Because supposedly, like, the, po the post, like, mortem stuff was treated as, like, this, like, PTSD, which could have been an interesting angle, but they just didn't further that at all, of course. And, um, then, um, and, th and then they just, like, they just completely, like, reveal that, oh, he's actually this, like, young version of Agent Smith that literally comes out of nowhere, and he's, like, this reincarnation, even though Agent Smith was completely destroyed in the third film, which doesn't make any con continuity sense in the continuity at all. And, 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 and also, final thing, um, besides the villain being awful, making no sense, um, the action is not nearly as good as any of the other movies, um, and just, the whole thing is, like, lackluster, they, there's so many, like, writing choices that just boggle me, but the biggest one of all is why this movie even exists, like, this movie did not need to exist, this is purely just, like, a cash grab of the absolute worst variety, and nothing about it makes sense at all. Um, this is a bad film. Do, do not watch this. And number seven is Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Um, so for reference, I think uh, The Last Crusade is amazing. Definitely... If not my top 20, then I'm pretty sure my top 30 favorite films. Um, Raiders of the Lost Ark is a solid film, but The Last Crusade is easily the best one. And this one is absolutely awful. Because, for starters, like, the side characters introduced are really bad and have absolutely no impact on the story. Uh, second, I feel like Han Solo's performance, or not Han Solo, 
Harrison Ford performance is in this movie is just personally the most like lackluster and low energy out of all of them. I also felt like this movie had the least exciting stunts of all three films. And uh, I think that's everything about like non characters and plot. Then we, then we get to the romance. So like this starts out as like I think like he's like in this auction or something, trying to steal something, which is decently entertaining setup. That's one thing that all these movies very much have in common. Um however the the uh there is like this blonde woman who like is like the is like one of the wives of one of the people that he's like stealing from or whatever. And for some reason she is one of the main characters in this movie. And like while the first Indiana Jones movie I guess he had a half okay romance, not my favorite, but like not totally egregious. This one is terrible. Like like the romance build up is the most nonsensical of any romance I've ever seen, besides possibly Frozen. I didn't even talk about that in Frozen. Um But like like, they they don't have any chemistry at all, and they just fall in love because the plot literally needs them to. And speaking of the plot, the plot makes absolutely no sense. Like, I, I can't even remember consistently what the heck was going on, because the plot is all over the place, the pacing is whack, the writing just doesn't make any sense at all. Like, there are so many things about this movie that are just completely black. It is not an enjoyable movie to watch. Speaking of wacky movies, at number six is Jumanji. Um, you thought Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom had a wacky plot? You thought Trolls had a wacky plot? Look no further than this movie for the wackiest ass plot of all time. Um, I consider this to be the singular, the only singularly bad Robin Williams performance, and that is because I feel like he is not particularly funny in this movie compared to plenty of the other gems that he's been in. Um, and I feel like his character is like does not make any does not like um it's just not very good like well written in this movie. Um, and the, so, the plot, um, it's basically about this, like, deadly board game that, like, simulates real life, and, like, you can get, like, stuck in the game, and it's all this wacky, wacky stuff, and, um, uh, and, like, there's so many different, like, random things that happen in this movie, from, like, lions being all over the place, to monkeys, to stampedes of wild elephants that just go everywhere, to a house being flooded and becoming a jungle, to, like, this random assassin dude that's trying to shoot them. Nothing in this movie makes any sense, and it is complete and utter chaos in the worst way possible. And and on top of that, the writing doesn't even like begin to explain how how certain parts of the game work, and it and it feels like it just kind of throws random things in there just for the heck of it. It this this movie is mind boggingly awful, and, and it honestly gives me a seizure, like, thinking about all the random crap that's in this movie, it doesn't make any sense, um, okay, sorry about that, guys, got some milk real quick,
All right. Moving into the top five. And number five is Brother Bear. Now, if you've seen my final reckoning video, um, then you'll then you'll know my full opinions on this movie. I'm not gonna go too into it though. I'm not, I'm not gonna go too into it, but um, this is the worst animated movie I've ever seen. Um, and I and rewatching it for Final Reckoning firmly gave me that opinion. Um, this movie is just completely like nonsensical, like. There are so many bad elements of the plot that don't make any sense, like repeated plot elements and absolutely terrible characters. Um, and like the way that he becomes the bear and like the way that um, Sitka ends up playing a role in the story is awful. And the little bear is extremely annoying and there's absolutely no relationship between him and um, cannot, can I, um, so, and, and for some reason in, like, the last 35 minutes, this movie decides to become a very bad musical movie with terribly cheesy songs as a half-decent twist, I guess, but, like, the themes of this movie are just, like, nonsensical, like, why does he choose to stay a bear at the end? Like, it doesn't make any sense, and this movie is just absolutely just painful to watch. It's so bad. Um, and number four is Attack of the Clones. Um, I like to summarize my problem with this movie in five primary flaws. Number one. Bad writing slash directing. And this is the biggest issue with the entire movie. I've always said George Lucas has vision, but he does not have skills as a director. Um, because this movie is absolutely, like, the dialogue between characters is so cringy, like, Anakin and Padme's romance is extremely undeserved. And just the dialogue in general is really bad. Like, like there's also just a lot of really dumb dialogue moments in this, in, in plot moments in this film. Like, Obi-Wan losing his light, like, no, not lightsaber. Anakin losing his lightsaber multiple times, mind you, even though he is a Jedi apprentice and that really shouldn't be happening. Obi-Wan failing to catch an assassin. Um, Obi-Wan losing a planet. Like, there are so many dumb writing decisions that make absolutely no sense in this movie. And, um, and, and which, which brings me to the second issue, um, uh, bad acting. And just put simply, like, the only good actors in this movie are Christopher Lee, Ian McDiarmid, and Ewan McGregor. Like, Hayden Christensen just in general is not a very good actor. Um, and Natalie Portman, I feel like this was not, this was grossly miscast for her. So, um, yeah, just bad casting overall, I think. Um... I don't know if it was five major issues, but the next one is the um the the overwhelming and in my opinion probably actually the most egregious issue in this movie is the absolutely insanely stupid amount of CGI. Like this movie feels like it has to compensate. With for CGI with with for something with CGI at every possible moment. 
Like, every single one of the fight scenes has some kind of CGI in it, and, like, many of the fight scenes are just done on green screens, which, like, completely, like, takes away the, like, intense feeling, because it just feels kind of fake. Um, but the worst example of it just being a mess is the droid factory scene. Like, the preface, this is a scene that should not be in the movie at all. It's completely pointless. But, like, the CGI is such a mess in this scene. Like, there's so many things going on, especially also in, like, the final Geonosis fight. You can't tell half of what is going on because there's so much CGI just all over the place. It's ridiculous. Um... I think that about sums up why I don't like this movie. And number three um, is Fight Club. Um, I went more in depth about this in my review of the movie, so I would recommend that. But there are very few movies that, like, I think the top three is the only movies I have truly liked despised for one reason or another. Um, and Fight Club is definitely one of those movies because like for one, I understood the themes it was trying to go for, but it just really didn't work for me. And um I also found this movie to be extremely disturbing. And at the same time, it was also miraculously boring, because for a movie about Fight Club and fights, the fights were extremely uninteresting. And by the end of the movie, it's, like, the best way I can describe this movie in one sentence is it's a two-hour and twenty-minute fever dream of Andrew Tate clones just absolutely wrecking society. And, like, all the characters just eventually mold into this one stereotype, and it makes no sense. Now, I will say the ending is kind of interesting, like, the twist is okay, but then the love interest just makes, like, like whatever the heck her character name is, is also really, really terrible. Um, and just, like, the characters are so bad, and the writing choices don't make any sense, and and I'm just questioning so many things, and, like, I barely remember what this movie, because I, like I said, it's a fever dream, and I, but I do remember I really did not like it. <laughs> um, I, like, I, I, I'm gonna say it right now, I absolutely despise this movie, and I am never, ever watching it again. And number two is the Death Note live action movie. And my God, <laughs> this movie has so many problems. Uh, to start with, the hammer shots look really cheap. And um, if the, all the action, of which I might add, there is far too little in this movie for the anime that it is, like, the namesake of. And just thinking, uh, and every single action scene uses shaky cam for some extremely stupid reason. Like, why does every scene in this movie use shaky cam? It just makes all the action extremely hard to follow, and it's just a complete mess. Um,
And then, which this this also brings um well one more thing, the music choices are really bad in this film. It's all very cringy pop songs compared to like the epic opera tracks and rock songs in the original. This is just like extremely cringy pop songs that just feel very out of place. The second, my second issue with the movie is it is extremely boring at times, which leads me into the fact that the pacing is super off whack, and this is what causes it to be boring. The first act happens like almost immediately, and then they draw out the second, like the middle of the movie, where absolutely nothing substantial happens, and then they just rush to the end in a in a cramped third arc that is that is just completely unsatisfying with a terrible like final fight. Now we get to the characters. To start with, it feels like every single character in this movie is completely miscast. And the acting in general is absolutely horrid in this film. Some of the worst acting I've ever seen. Um, in fact, it may possibly be the worst acting I've ever seen in any film. And... Um, God, they, they, they managed to screw up every single character. To start with, Ryuk is the, Ryuk has the worst CG I've ever seen in any movie, ever. Um, and, and his character is completely written wrong. Like, like, he contradicts himself constantly because at the beginning, he, like, wants like to use the Death Note, which is completely unlike the Ryuk from the show, who is just doing in it to watch the human, to be entertained by what the humans did, necessarily. Oh. Uh, but then we, in this, in this movie, he's, like, actively encouraging, like, to do things. Which is completely out of character. And and also, and he can't even keep this this wrong caricature straight. He contradicts himself constantly between like, oh what use the use the death note or don't use the death note. If you don't want to just just leave it for somewhere for seven days. Speaking of the death note, this movie also like completely breaks and adds so many different rules of the Death Note that make no sense. And then it breaks its own rules that it adds, which makes absolutely no sense. It makes following the continuity of this movie even more confusing. Um, and then there's Light, who is, like, the stupidest character in the entire... Well, no, the second stupidest. I'll get to the stupidest in a second. Um... But the stupid, like, light in the in the show is incredibly cunning, and he plans ahead. But in this movie, he's so incredibly dumb. He just like he leaves the Death Note everywhere. He shows it to um, Mia, like at the first chance that he gets, and um, uh, and 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 like. He chooses his name based on the fact that they won't be able to track him in Japanese. Which, not even the fact that that's unlike the sh unlike how it happens in the show, but he's just really dumb. Why is so stupid in this movie? But the stupidest character by far is Watari, because. He, he loyally, like, blindly follows L's commands. Um. He literally lets himself 
be brainwashed by light with literally zero effort whatsoever, right? And then, um, and then, like, as he's about to reveal the information, for some reason, he just, if he, when he sees cops, he just dies. For, like, no reason at all. Um, and then, and then this, and then this brings me to possibly, uh, I'm not done with all the characters, so I'll have to get to Mia. Um, actually, I'll talk about Mia first. Mia is a trash heap in this film. She's a sad excuse for a Misa, and, like, their relationship is just so bad, and it's, like, all over the place, and it doesn't even make any sense, and it's just limited to these cringing makeout scenes, and while well, White just writes down names in the Death Note, they're just fucking making out. And, <laughs> um, dear lord. Like, just facepalm. Um, yeah, her character is just really, really bad, and, and, and somehow, like, despite being an extremely stupid character, it's smarter than White it is in the third act, Mia is smarter than White is throughout the course of the entire movie. Which is miraculous, because Mia is already a dumb character to begin with. Um, but, and anyway, I, I just wanted to kind of cover that quickly. Before we get to the absolute worst character in this whole film, and that is L. They did L such a disgrace on so many levels. So, for one, um, he, like, for some reason, the limit of his disguise and, and and keeping his identity secret, which in the anime, like, that's part of the mystery about him is, like, we, he goes to such mysteries to, like, keep his identity secret. What, like, then just the... But then in the film... Like, he just wears a hoodie and, like, a fucking bandana out in public, and that's it. And he purposely makes public appearances, which is the exact opposite of the light in the show. And also the opposite of light in the show is he somehow deduces light he somehow makes the assumption that light is cure within what feels like not even 10 seconds, which is different from the enemy where L had light as a potential suspect but didn't fully believe it was him, he was Kira, but was always a potential suspect. In this movie, no, he, you know, he just assu automatically assumes light is Kira based on very little evidence or reasoning whatsoever. And then, once Watari dies, oh boy, this is where it starts getting wacky. He just turns into this complete emotional retard. Because he wants to do nothing more than to absolutely murder White. Like, he just loses all other logical aspects of his character. And just becomes this insane maniac. He just wants to kill White for murdering Watari. And he just has these random bouts of anger that make no sense. And it's, it's just awful. And then in the third act, when he's told to be restrained and not go after White, he just appears out of nowhere and still tries to kill White anyway. And it makes no sense. Oh... Oh my god, this movie is astronomically terrible. Do not watch it. It is a worthless, rust cheek sham that, like, should be ashamed to be both a Netflix original, by the way, and share the same namesake as the original. It's trash. Avoid it like the plague.
Uh, number one, we have Night John. So for those who don't know, Night John is the worst book I've ever read because it has a terrible plot, absolutely nonsensical characters, and um and really, really bad dialogue. And it just makes me cringe every time I I ever think about this film. Um so to begin with why did this movie get why did this book get a movie adaptation? That's the first thing. There are so many other better books that deserve film adaptations to me. Um uh, and this movie is absolutely one well, not one of them. This movie did not deserve it whatsoever. Um which brings me to the to this part, to the other parts. Um, the plot is just as bad in this film, and it doesn't even follow the film. Like the like the main antagonist is like the plantation owner, but in the movie he he doesn't even start out as the antagonist. Like some crap happens with his son or something. I don't even remember because the plot is so forgettable. And then and like yes, he's like helping them on the farm and like moving them as if they're like a freaking sports team. But then he just comes oppressive against them half of the movie with like no motive barely any motivation at all. And the acting is also completely horrendous, and it doesn't make any, and, and the plot is just as nonsensical in this movie, while completely not following elements of the book that were at least a little more sensical, despite not making any sense at all, period. Um, the dialogue is also extremely terrible, um, and the acting is so, so bad. Like, egregiously bad. It's awful. It's cringy. All the side characters are completely worthless. Sarni is the dumbest protagonist of all time. Night John might possibly be the dumbest character I've ever seen in any movie, period. This movie sucks. It's the worst movie of all time. Oh man, this is definitely one of the longest videos I've made in a while. Um, but like I said, I always find this kind of video quite entertaining to record. Um, especially because I hadn't updated this one in a while. So, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye!